Former Sunday Times journalist Pete Rampedi has made sensational claims that Tiso black star officials and senior journalists plotted and campaigned to discredit him for exposing the SARS rogue unit. He names the deputy MD, CEO, and Sunday Times and Sweatin editors of conniving to save public enterprises, Minister Private Gordon, from the adverse effect arising from questions over the rogue unit in return for commercial support. Media commentators and experts have said the news media industry in South Africa needs to acknowledge that we have an industry-wide problem of trust and credibility arising out of the period of state capture. Pete Rampedi is here with me in the studio. And William Bird, director of Media Monitor Africa, is on the line with us. A very good evening to you both, and thank you so much for joining us. Uh, thanks, Episo, and thanks for having me. William, are you with us? Good evening. Let me just first start with, uh, I'm sure you would have seen this exchange, uh, some of what has been said on social media. What are your thoughts around these latest reports and the, uh, and the claims that Pete Rampini makes? So look, I think they, they're very serious, you know, and it's, and it's clearly something that now we're going to have to ultimately resort to the courts to find out where the truth lies because we've been given quite dramatically different versions of, of events and, and issues that I think, uh, you know, is going to cause the media certainly a lot of discomfort over the next few weeks or months until this is resolved. Mm. Why discomfort, though? As you say, we've heard different versions. There are those who have uh, claimed that Pete Rampedi is speaking out of a sense of sour grace because his integ integrity is in tatters. And, and he's made very serious allegations against people who are considered to be uh, bigwigs in the industry who are considered to be uh, very credible. And, of course, we're talking about a, a minister in the cabinet as well. Why should we be confused about where the chips fall? Because... It does come down to impression at the end of the day. Well, it's not just impressions. I mean, we've had, until this point, uh, until the public protectors report on Friday, it appeared that there seemed to be some consensus that the, the, the stories around the rogue unit were not, in fact, true. And that seemed to be borne out by the evidence presented before the Newton Commission as well as the apologies that were presented by the Sunday Times, including the subsequent editors. Um, and, and then we you know, now hear that there's other evidence that apparently the public presenter, uh, protector had. And that seems to have thrown the veracity of those things into, into question. So it's not a matter of, of, of just he said, she said. This seems to be something that now we need to actually get clarity as to where the truth lies. And mm. now, you know, Mr. Rampetti is making some very uh, strong and serious uh, allegations. And I think the only way for these things to go forward is for them to be tested in court. And I'll get to him and have him tell his story in just a moment. But how should the public then frame what is going on? Should the question be how deeply mired or involved is the South African media or press in the state capture narrative? So, look, I mean, I think that media have to report on, on what's going on and they need to make sure that they verify the stories and the evidence that, that they have before them. This now would have seemed to throw the other stories and the other evidence into question, given that, you know, you're getting a very different version of events from the public protector and now from, uh, well, not now, but I guess he's maintained that, but from Mr. Rampedi. So it's, it's something that, you know, means that the media are going to have to make sure that going forward, whatever they say, they're going to have to be very sure that they can back it up, especially in relation to these kinds of stories. Mm. So, Pete, can you back it up? You've made some very serious allegations against some um, people within the industry and outside. Can you back it up? Do you have evidence to some of the things that you've said? Look, Sir Piso, um, Ms. Ilgaz and I have always maintained that we know what we're talking about. We have never shied away from confirming that the rogue unit did exist and it still does exist. The reason why we opted to leave Sunday Times rather than apologize and affirm staged bogus and self-saving apologies on the part of the Sunday Times and its editorial team was because we didn't want to be bought. We didn't want to When you confirm. say you didn't want to be bought, are you suggesting that there were people who were bought to write certain stories or to prevent others from coming out in the media? 
Look, I am not aware of anybody who has given money to, um, you know, write one, a story one or the other. But what I can tell you is that if you look at how the, those stories were conceptualized over a period of time and what has been confirmed now by the public protector, she's essentially confirming the allegations which were published way back in 2014, which were confirmed by three independent uh, investigations, internal investigations by the SARS. There's a Kakani report, the Ganyani report, and the Judge Gruen report. And just to come back to uh, what uh, William Baird is saying. Okay, before you get there, so mm. you said you're not suggesting that anybody has been bought, but mm. bit when you say certain mm. individuals, which, by the way, and I must tell our viewers that we've invited quite a number of people to come on and refute some of these allegations, mm. have a right of reply or comment on it because they have at some point been uh, mentioned or they've commented and they either have said no or were unavailable, etc. But when you say you don't know of anybody who's been bought, you have suggested that the Deputy MD, the CEO of TISO and Sunday Times and Sweating Editors connived and you say in your own words, in return for commor commercial support. Is that not some bartering, some trading, some buying? Maybe let me just give you exam an example so that I can come back mm. to that question. When we started with this investigation, we made, we actually exposed a couple of things. One, that there was a, 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 a rogue unit within SARS, which had um, violated the law, uh, put prominent people under surveillance, and also backed the NPA office in 2007. That has been confirmed by the public protector uh, yesterday. We also said that this particular unit was set up illegally because at the time, uh, the, uh, um, the, the Commissioner of SARS, uh, uh, Minister Pavin Gordon, who is a minister now, had written a memo to Trevor Manuel, who was the finance minister, requesting approval to establish this investigations unit. Trevor Manuel um, gave them a, an approval on condition that the unit was placed within the National Intelligence Agency. This was not done, and in, uh, uh, um, uh, SARS then went underground and established that unit, which then operated outside the law. This has been confirmed by the public protector again. Then now, after these stories were published, there were other journalists who obviously were entitled to investigating the same subject and, and reported the same, I mean, the way they saw fit. But what was strange about what they were, they were writing was that they, instead of investigating an issue and presenting their own version of events, they went for us as the Sunday Times Investigations Unit, especially Mziligas and I, they tried to discredit us. They said we were on the payroll of state security agents. They never uh, uh, you know, presented any evidence. And after that, they then started uh, you know, trying Are to you smear us. Are you saying they us. benefited, and if so, how? I'm not saying they benefited. Let me, let me tell you something, um, uh, what I meant when I said some paid journalists. There were journalists who were clearly not interested in the facts in as far as this matter was concerned. I mean, uh, I can give an example about Jack Paul. He wrote in the book that um, I was discredited. Uh, I had been given money by the Guptas to establish um, a, a newspaper called Sunday yeah. Times. And, and that um, I also got money from government to establish a newspaper. I wrote a letter to him, a lawyer's letter, and said, look, Mr. Paul, I appreciate what you say about me. Please, I'm challenging you to release publicly any evidence of wrongdoing on my part in relation to the rogue unit and the establishment of African Times. And if you produce that evidence, I'll follow okay. my sword Hold and thought, resign. Pete. William, I'm going to come back to you because as a member of the public or a consumer of the media, I'm asking myself, and I'm not saying I in my personal capacity, but I'm saying, are people not wondering if this is not a case of infighting within media groups or the whole media industry just because there's a difference of allegiance and alliance or of what people believe is actually going on, the interpretation of what's going on within this whole issue around the rogue unit of state capture and how it then should be portrayed? Yeah, certainly some people might think that, uh, that that is the case. And I guess, as I've said, you know, this is why it really is fundamentally important that we get to the bottom of, of, of what's going on here. You know, there's a, there's, we now are left as members of the public with very and fundamentally different versions of, 
of what's been going on uh, in, in in our country and certainly in our media and how they've reported on things over the last couple of years. Mm-hmm. And, and and it seems to me that the only way that that's going to be resolved is, is for these things to be tested in a court of law where they can find out what versions they are and, what, and, and, and where the truth actually lies. But William, some would say the, this is why... Uh, self-regulation in the media has been raised, that the media should be able to handle these issues within themselves, because uh, as we've seen various journalists trading barbs over this, some have apologized for the things that they've written, discredited, discrediting what others are saying. Is the media itself incapable of drawing out the truth, the facts, just on the basis of how and when issues have been framed and being reported? No, and I think that that's a worrying sort of trend that some people might try and read into that. You know, this is this is something where you've had uh, divergent reports, not coming from uh, the media, but from you know various state and, and state aligned and non state aligned institutions. You've had deliberate uh, misinformation campaigns about these issues coming from various sources in various places, and the media now are caught up in that to then suggest that somehow that it's because. The media are unable to regulate on these things. Is is just it would be grossly uh, unfair. You know, it's, it's, you've got the public protector coming out and finding something fundamentally at odds with uh, with what was put forward in the Nugent Commission. You know, so it's, if you're going to make that argument, you'd have to say, well, clearly the Nugent Commission and the state, because the state and the public protector have come up with different things, that that it means that uh, they are unable to come to a conclusion. So mm-hmm. I don't think that that's fair at all. What it does say is is that. Media have been, and we know that this is the case, that they have been uh, used at various times to pursue particular agendas, whether that's witting or unwittingly, that that we know is the case. And what it does do is it undermines uh, people's trust and uh, in, and belief in, in the media as a whole. And that, I think, is a very worrying thing mm. for, for our democracy, which is why I'm saying this really needs to be tested and all of these issues need to be heard in a court of law so that we can get some real clarity as to where this lies so we know... Uh, you know, what, what's mm. actually going on. And I'm glad you say witting or unwittingly. The media is a microcosm of society. Um, I'm hearing you say, um, are, they, are they immune to being drawn into taking sides or having allegiances that influence their um, approach in their work, which is we're supposed to obviously be neutral, but as human beings, is it possible that they are influenced uh, just on the basis of whom they believe in. Well, it might be, you know, but and I guess the the, the thing is, and what we see is, is that time and again, the, all, everyone has perspectives on things, and that's and there's no problem with that. Where you've got a story where you are reporting on something of, as significant as this, where it might involve, let's say, a, a corruption of, of of people or abuse of of, of public resources, whether you like that person or you don't like that person, or whether you have a view on them shouldn't actually matter because if you report that, you need to have clear documentary evidence that you go to your editor and say, here's the evidence, I've got these notes, I've got these sources, these are the recordings, these are the documents that I've got that prove it either as this, this, or this. Mm. And that's the basis. And then the editor needs to decide, well, yes, I believe that we've got enough. If necessary, they consult with lawyers and say, do we think that we've got enough? And then they go and they report that story. Now, what we know has happened is that Deliberate plans have been hatched to mislead and mis- misguide them, uh, the media. We know that a number of falsified documents are regularly presented to media where they're part of a concerted campaign to deliberately mm. push a particular agenda. And, and, and I'd like to ask Pete this question because this is where the question then gets asked. Pete, are you using social media platforms? Are you using this platform, for instance, to push your own self-serving agenda? Why have you not reached out to other groups such as uh, Senate, the Public Protector, the Zondo Commission, some of us, to you know, ventilate some of these issues? Okay, before I come there, let me okay. address what William Berry is saying. There are two fundamental problems with what William Berry is alleging. One, he's making a claim that the issue of the SARS rogue unit was ventilated before the Nugent Commission. That is a deliberate lie. What happened at the Nugent Commission is that when people tried to ask Judge Nugent to investigate the rogue unit, his response was that he didn't want to be distracted by the issue of the rogue unit because it was not part of the terms and of, and, and, um, of reference 
of the Nijian Commission. He then said anybody who had information about what would have happened wrong with the, uh, with the rogue unit should uh, then um, approach other authorities to investigate that issue because it was not part of his terms of reference. So what William Berry is saying is not true. Secondly, he's talking about consensus in the media about the rogue unit until the release of the public protector report. And the question is clear. He's, to, he's saying there was consensus that uh, the, the, the rogue unit did not exist. By who? Okay, let Where? me... No, you, no, 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 no. Well, this, let's this, answer this, that question. No, 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 is no, that no, what no, you be, mean? No, no, no. Be, be, before, before, because I, we okay. gave him time to explain. Okay, no, it's fine. Please. He's saying there's consensus. Who reached this consensus? Where? Because in the media, my understanding is that the media industry um, uh, comprises of journalists who are competing, who are investigating and doing their and work independently. Independent. So if there's consensus, that's where the problem is, because our contention has always been that there is a cabal of journalists, editors, NGOs, and, and other commentators who met somewhere, reached a consensus that they are going to pursue a narrative that this rogue unit does not exist. So any evidence which came, which did not feed that narrative, mm. they would then crush it or try to discredit the people who were bringing that narrative. That's a problem with that so-called consensus. And I'm, this is why I wanted him to respond before I ask you this question. Because, because I, I also because wanted, I also important. wanted to. But go ahead. Yeah, I also Could wanted you. to go back to the issue of. Um, uh, you said whether we've got proof uh, and yes, we mentioned evidence. names. And, and, uh, yeah, yeah. and I was going to ask you to follow up on that cabal that you yeah. talk about. Yeah, yeah. Where you did see, they meet? Who look, are they? No, no, no. The, I don't want to mention the names of people because you're saying you didn't invite them to come here. Well, but, I did invite them. They, some declined, some were unavailable, some, yes. But, okay, 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 fine. fine. I'll talk about the people that I've mentioned already. It's, it's, it's actually a fact that I did uh, confront Mushosho Monar, Temi Somsomi, and uh, Bongani Sitoko before I resigned, after I, um, I received information that they had met with representatives of uh, Minister Pravin Godan, Ivan Pile, Adrian Lakay, and Johan van Lohrenbeck to talk about um, uh, how to kill the rogue unit stories and how to manage me and Mzili Gazi and how, how to ensure that that narrative is killed and then the Sunday Times Investigations Unit is disbanded. At the time, the Sunday Times uh, was going through a rough patch commercially and uh, my information was that they were promised commercial support which would have been mobilized by uh, Minister Gordon in the private sector to support the group. When I went to uh, Wanganis Goko's office to say, look, I'm aware that uh, yourself, Moshe and Temi Somsomi met with these people. I gave him the, 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 the venues between January and February in 2016 where you discussed uh, uh, how to make a U-turn on the rogue unit stories and sacrifice me and Mzilikas. He didn't deny that. All he said was that, look, um, I said to him, why do you in, uh, uh, entertain so-called representations about a story which when we covered it, you were not here, you're not the editor here, you're not even around here, and now you are saying you are going to apologize. He then said, look, um, I'm sorry uh, for having met with these people behind your back. Uh, uh, is there uh, evidence to not only this conversation, Pete? Evidence of what? I, I, I'm saying I'm ask Bongani to come here and say this I've is not true. I've asked him and he has declined to Declining to comment is not the same as saying Pete is lying. Ask him to come here and say Pete is lying. So I is went there to his evidence office, of these meetings that you say took place? I gave him the evidence. Mm -hmm. Ask him to come here and say Pete is lying. I gave him the evidence of the venue, the people who were there, what was discussed. And after I resigned, he asked me uh, not to resign. Okay. He said, look, Have stay there. Have you approached there. anybody within the media, whether it's the press ombudsman or the public protector or anybody with this evidence that you had done wrong on the basis of collusion which you alleged? Why would I ap approach the public protector? And why, so and, 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 questions and, and, have been asked. No, yeah. why? Uh, and uh, to mm. what end? Mm. Because, because here you're talking about a media company which is conniving with a politician. It's got nothing to do with public funds. No, I said the it's got nothing, no, no, it's got nothing to do with public funds. It's got nothing to do with maladministration, which is the role of the public protector. I mentioned here you're several. About, I, I mentioned the press ombuds. Mm. I've mentioned SANEF. Okay, let's, let's come to SANEF. It's well known, and I've said it on several occasions, that the reason why I left SANEF in 2016 was because SANEF has got no principles. SANEF has been conniving to uh, uh, protect certain journalists, certain media organizations. And I've told my colleagues at SANEF when I left that, look, you are not consistent in how you do your work. You pick sides, 
uh, you trash some people and defend others regardless of the issues mm. at, at hand. And as a result, I don't think I can associate with you anymore. Right. And that's why I left SANEF. So as, as things stand, I don't have confidence in SANEF. And I think SANEF is factional. Mm. I think SANEF doesn't represent me. And, and, and if you check SANEF's members, they represent less, less than 5% of editors in this country. Pete, so I, I, I hold the thought. To I'm going to ask you again. If you mm. think there's any way where you believe you have recourse to mm. raise these issues, mm. you say your reputation has been tarnished as, mm. as a result of the actions of these people or the allegations that you make against mm. them. But William Bird, a very important question that Pete has asked is about this notion of consensus in the media saying that it is very problematic. Is that what you meant? when you said um, there's been consensus around the rogue unit, and if so, where does that term understanding or notion come from? So look, he also suggested that the media and various others, including, he said, some NGOs gathered together and met to agree on a particular approach around consensus. Can I just be clear from Mr. Rampedi that he's not referring to the organization I run in that. Pete is asking you a question. He's, he's, he's saying what? Are you sure that his organization was not part of those meetings? I'm, I'm, I'm not sure why um, he's chickening out or freaking out when I never mentioned the media monitoring uh, 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 No, 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 project. because you mentioned... Because, because the, the question, the question, 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 here question here is what is his understanding of that consensus? Because you said, Pete, you said, you said that I'm lying and you said that what I said was not true. I'm, so say, I'm, just, I'm saying you're you not telling the you truth. That, uh, NGOs, including NGOs, met, and I'm wanting to just get a clarity from you. Were you suggesting that the organization I run was one of those? I'm not chickening out of anything I'm, or freaking out. I'm okay. asking you a question about that. Okay, let me respond to you directly. I don't want to mention the names of any organization at this point in time. The, the, the question but here... are you suggesting the, that the organization that I run is part of that? Did I say that? He's asking no, a direct no, I'm question. I'm asking if you are. No, I'm but not suggesting said, that your organization is part of it, but I'm not, I don't want to discuss you, the names at this point in time. That's what I wanted to just get clarity on. So now I'm happy to engage on the rest of the, on the, rest of the discussion. Okay. So, 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 so the Nugent Commission question, where is this thing that uh, the, Nugent, the Nugent Commission said the, the rogue unit doesn't exist? Why are you getting that? So let me, let me explain my position here, which is okay. that, I have not at any stage, nor have, nor will I pretend to be any kind of expert on this, which is why I've said since the start of this interview, this needs to be aired in a court of law so that people can get clear on where the truth actually lies. Okay. I'm, 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 okay, I'm, okay, I'm happy I'm to subject to, myself to that, but... I, but, but, I want to interrupt one, now and I've, take control of this conversation because mm. I think the very important issue of the notion of consensus within the media is for, I think, people who are watching very intriguing. Should there be such? Is there such? And is it concerning if there is such? So when you, when you say there's consensus around things, for example, of course you'll find consensus on the majority of issues. Is climate change a, a fundamental threat to, our, to our, our world and our global environment? Yes, it is. There will be consensus among the majority of media about the, the fact that that is the case. When you get a number of, of, of issues and a number of reports and the media themselves that report on this, that they go and they say these things and then you build up over time and a number of other and a range of media put forward a particular view about something, then you can say that, yes, there is consensus on that. That's a fundamentally different thing to suggesting that media get together and they say, okay, you know what, we're going to challenge this idea around this story and we're going to say something different about these particular issues. So you know, the one is a, is a conspiracy, and the other is, is consensus around what appears to be uh, evidence that has then been brought forth before the public light. So before, if you had said uh, there, there's consensus that there's state capture, until such time as there was sufficient evidence brought into the public light, people may not have believed that, and they would have denied it. Now we know that they there is more than enough evidence to suggest that. So, yes, there's consensus in the media that there is something called state capture. All right. William, thank you so much for joining us and sharing your views, your insights with us. And, uh, Peter, you. I need to ask you in a word, hmm. are you intending to take legal action against anybody in relation to the issues that you've raised? 
Look, for, for, for me, it's, it's a piece of, the reason why I've never taken any legal action and the reason why I resigned on my own volition was because I knew that the truth, if you read my resignation letter, at the end there I said, the truth is like toxic waste. Okay. Even if you can bury it underneath, it's got a funny way of coming right. out. I knew that this issue would come out one day and that we will be vindicated, which has just happened. Right. And, and, and there's no need uh, uh, you know, to be taking anybody to court. They will just live with their own demons. All right, Pete, thank you so much for speaking to us. And I must say that uh, we did put out an invitation to some of the people that he mentioned, Mushwesh Munari, Bongani Sikoko, Johan von Lochenberg, Jacques Poe, and Stefan Hofstadter. And I said, some of these people were invited to respond. Some declined, some refused, some said they were unavailable. And of course, we are still willing to offer a right of reply to any of the people that Peter's mentioned or alluded to. Thank you so much for watching us this evening. This has been The Full View. The weather is up next and a full news update at 8 o'clock.